So we've got another one, the RG556 from Ambernick. I usually get pretty excited for Ambernick products, you know, their handhelds. Uh, I think they're one of the best companies out there for this kind of thing. But I mean, let's be real. These guys are all releasing these things like every two weeks there's a new version. But this one, I've already been messing with it. I've recorded a bunch of footage, playing some games, and this is pretty close to the top of my list, I think. So go Game Geek. They sent this to me for purpose review. Uh, they send me a lot of stuff. They don't really care, you know, if I like it or don't like it. They just send me stuff, and that's where we are at. But this thing is freaking beautiful. Just look at it. Holy crap. So we got this like clear bluish one, and then I think there's a black one. Uh, this looks slick, man. We got the handles or butt cheeks, whatever you know, you know, however you want to refer to them, right? You got a nice little fan. I think there's like a heat pipe that goes through over the chipset and whatnot. The ventilation, you got some ventilation up there with the uh, looks like the fins and whatnot with the fan, the heat sink, the you know pipes, all that good stuff. Uh, there's some. Like open air right there, but then over here, I, don't, I really don't know what the point is because it's kind of flush against the uh, that back metal plate. I guess it's not really for airflow. But I don't know, but uh, I've been using this a lot and I haven't had any issues with heat dissipation or anything like that. I think it's going to be fine. But this thing, we got Android 13 uh, on here. What is the chipset? Oh, the CPU is a Unisoc T820 processor. So that's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this on. Got a little vibration here. So this thing's got Hall Effect joysticks, Hall Effect uh, shoulder buttons. And then we've got this OLED screen, 1080p OLED screen that looks freaking amazing. We got some speaker. I think the speakers are in here. Like the handles down there. 5.8 inch uh, screen. Uh, I know I mentioned the screen, but I didn't mention the size of it. But let's take a look. So Android-based system, touch screen. You can go through, hit up all the different emulators. You've got the Play Store on here. Yeah, whatever you want to do. you got Moonlight if you want to do some you know, streaming of uh, PC games. Let me see. Do we got the other? Oh, yeah, key mapping options. Uh, you've got, is that game mode on, off? Okay. So you got a few options up here that they've been doing with their, their Android handhelds but look at this thing so you got the uh, SD card slot down here I'm not going to take it out it is a 128 gigabyte that I have here USB-C for a uh, charging headphone jack like I said I'm pretty sure these are the speakers down here up top just volume power and that's it no no craziness I'm sure there's got to be a way to turn these LEDs off on the front we have our home button our Ambernick button this is like the game button just hit it Bam! We are in our easy access like game list here, right? So this is pretty cool. Let me zoom up a little bit. I believe this build, the 128 gigabyte one, it's like four or five thousand games, little selection of everything. Like, you know, you got NES here, a little bit of artwork. Uh, usually, you know, when a company sends a build with one of these things, you know, I kind of have to look at that as well. Is it sloppy? Is it not sloppy? Uh, this just kind of, you know, a, a mid-level build. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just a small little build. It's clean. It looks fine. I've scrolled through all this stuff earlier, and I didn't really see, like, duplicates or anything. Uh, can be organized a little better. I hate with the numbers on the side, and then eventually there are no numbers type of thing. Um, just kind of makes the, the sorting non-alphabetical, which is a little annoying. Like you see... Starts going into, like, now we're in alphabetical, but before we had, like, numbers. Ah, I don't freaking know. We got 59 PC Engine games. Really cool stuff. Let me let me uh, open one of these. I'll show you the footage because I really tested a lot of the, uh, the higher demanding stuff. But look at this freaking screen. I know it's kind of glary, but this screen is freaking beautiful. It's comfortable in my hands. The, my only real criticism, I think, is, like, the LB and RB buttons. Like... I don't know. Like, I can easily hit these, but these just kind of feel a little weird at times. Um, let me get out of that. And then, like, the buttons, everything feels fine. The D-pad's a little slippery because it's shiny and slick. And so are the buttons, which it's all fine. 
but they are a little stiff. Maybe over time that'll uh, kind of work out. But yeah, there's a little PC engine. Screen's looking freaking great. But exit out of that. Usually just hold home or sometimes depending on the emulator, you just hit it and it'll go to you know some options. Got CPS, 63 games, bunch of stuff there. Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, 634, I believe it said. So it's a good selection. Like you're not getting pumped up with too much of this stuff. Like Game Boy 930, that might be a little much. Uh, so there might be multiple regions mixed in here. But overall, like pretty nice list, man. Uh, what else? Neo Geo. What was it, 144? That's about the full library. So that's cool. 630 Super Nintendo games. Nice. CPS2. PS1. What did it say? 35 games. So I know I played some PS1. Can't remember what I played. I think it was Castlevania was one of them I recorded footage of. Of course, PlayStation is going to run on tons of devices. It's It plays here, but just to test the build, make sure they didn't like use crappy ROMs. They have the music in it. So they're going to play great, run just fine. Sega Saturn, there's only six games here. Um... And I tried a couple of them. Street Fighter, the movie, just would not load. But it, the power of this system, the emulator, Sega Saturn games should be no problem. Uh, but, yeah, I've played a few of them. They were fine. Just maybe the Street Fighter, the movie ROM uh, was bad. I'm not sure. Nintendo 64 can be a challenge. They didn't include very many games here. But I played uh, Ocarina of Time, uh, F-Zero X. And these games, man, like on a lot of these devices, they'll load up and then stutter, sputter along for a moment, have some glitches, maybe some pauses in the emulation, and then it'll smooth out, right? And on this, I had none of that. It was just boom, smooth, like perfect emulation, in my opinion, with Nintendo 64. Not a big selection here, but these games ran just fine. CPS3, got them Street Fighters in there. MAME, only 23 games, but, you know, some of the ones that are going to count, I think. There's some cool stuff here. You can always add more. Uh, Game Boy Color. Dreamcast. I know I play Dreamcast. Not a lot here, but Dreamcast plays just fine. Uh, just like Naomi is going to play. Hey, we got some Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color. We got PS2 up in here. 17 games though. Now PS2 was like interesting. Uh, playing like Tekken Tag Tournament, God of War. Like I always try to play some fighting games because they're quick to get into. And it seemed to play okay. God of War can be a very demanding game for every system that it's uh, released on. You know, and with emulation, it's kind of a good test there. And with PS2 here, it may need a few minor tweaks, but it played very well. Uh, a few stutters, little stammers and the you know emulation, some dips in the, the FPS, but overall it was very playable. Most of these games are gonna run just fine. Uh, Final Burn Alpha, we got 77 games, so some more arcade stuff. Game Boy Advance, a Thomas Wave, PSP. PSP, I played a few games as well, and it was very smooth, no uh no real issues there, so that's a good thing but just not a lot of games. Nintendo DS, I love Nintendo DS, and uh, those are gonna play perfectly fine on here. You have some controls as far as how to uh, manipulate the way the screen looks, uh, but it, it's gonna run fine. DS, not crazy demanding. And then Wii. Wii, there's a small selection of games on this device. Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, one of my favorites. The only reason I kept the Wii for the longest time. I love that game. And it plays great on this device. Like, there's no weirdness. Uh, I've noticed in, sometimes when I've emulated this game before, it would have to, like, catch up with the textures and the effects and stuff like that. But here, it was mostly smooth. I did not have an issue with Tatsunoko vs. Capcom at all. So pretty nice seeing Wii running on here. They did not include GameCube, unfortunately. But GameCube, if you add it, should run just fine. Nintendo 3DS, how many games we have? 13 games. So this is really cool. Love 3DS as well. And there's just a small selection of games here. I tested a few of them and they play great. So yeah, overall, I'm really digging this handheld. The look of it, it's a little slippery though. You know, if you got some buttery ass hands, this may fall out of your, you know, 
your grip and, and break. I don't know, but you know, if you got some uh, normal hands that aren't all slippery and shit, like you'll be fine with this. I'm digging it. This is one of my top favorites so far. Uh, I give it, I give it a thumbs up. The build's kind of, eh, whatever, but easily, you know, fixed up, add things that you want. But it's not a bad build. It's just kind of almost like a little, little sample platter there, you know. A lot of cool stuff here. But yeah, let me know what you think. If you're interested, uh, Go Game Geek has them on their site with uh, different setups as far as micro SD cards. Link down below. Thank you guys. Bye.